Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jason with JW Classic VW back at you again with another vlog. Me and Goose, my 1956 Owen wrecked up. It is downright gorgeous today here in Houston. So stay tuned. A lot of good questions came in through the Facebook group, email, and YouTube. So you're gonna wanna check it out and see what kind of questions people have about Goose. See you guys in a minute. All right, guys, welcome back. Like I was telling you, we had quite a few questions when it came to Goose. This is our very first Q&A. Q&A! So we're gonna go ahead and cover those questions and talk to you a little bit about what guys wanted to know. Mostly dealing with the rear end of Goose's transmission and if I've done any modifications to the rear suspension. Uh, back to you one second. I'm gonna put some of those questions on the board for you guys so you can follow along one minute. So guys, question number one comes from Chris H. Have I done any mods to the rear suspension? Other than dropping it down a notch, uh, in, in just the rear suspension, just dropping the plate down a notch? Uh, no, not really. I do plan on doing some serious modifications. Well, not serious, but a uh, uh, pretty decent modification to the rear suspension soon with the, uh, the Kafer bar system is, uh, let's see, this is your rear wheels. And this is where the engine hooks up. This is where the transmission is, transmission area. And you have your shock tower here, shock tower here, and then this is like for a link pin, your suspension. So what it's gonna do is the Kafer bar system is it'll be adding a bar across here, a bar down here, a bar down here, and then there's there's like a oh yeah, and there's like a bar that goes to the back back here back here farther so you get the triangulation there so the triangulation up to the shocks tower there shock shock tower there and this bar has actually been installed by uh glenn the duckman over at duckman cycles and vw garage so i'm gonna go ahead and link his video up here <laughs> go ahead and check that out if you're interested in some more information on that kfort bar system he did a really great tutorial on an install for it and i'm gonna be adding the same thing to goose and her rear end right? her rear end <laughs> all right question number two so question number two comes from uh, VW Rich flat four. Yeah, flat four. How long have you had your car? We don't ever refer to a goose as a car. If you do, it's a VW bug or beetle. Or goose. Great question. Uh, how long have I had goose for? Oh, not very long. Probably not as long as some of you guys may have, but about, about two years. About two years. And you also asked, what were the first mods that I did with goose? And let's see, that's a tough one. The first mods I did with goose. Well. The the first thing I did was the interior <laughs> was, well, actually the ragtop. The first thing that I did was, was finish the ragtop on Goose because when I got Goose, Goose was a rolling chassis. The bodywork had already been done. So that was super great because it's really expensive to get good bodywork done. And if you've seen her and now you've seen her in 4K, she's gorgeous. And it's a polar silver paint job that's done on her. And it was done immaculately by the previous, previous owner because the previous owner hadn't done much to Goose when I got her, other than, uh, mm, not, oh, not much. Oh, he painted the gas tank. The gas tank got painted by the previous owner, but the previous, previous owner did all the real restoration work. And it's gorgeous. He did a fantastic job, it looks great. And I was so happy to get her. What I ended up doing when I got Goose was I had to go through all the electrical stuff, uh, go through some of the, well, almost all the brake system because it had just been sitting for so long and replace all the wheel cylinders and brake lines because they're just worn out. I've been sitting for quite a while. Uh, the whole interior was from SoFine, so that was all added. And then I rebuilt the whole rack top. I had to pop out the rear windows, which sucked, but after they've already been seated in, it wasn't so bad to pop them out and pop them back in again because I had to do some work on the headliner that had been put in just some uh, staining here and there that had to be repaired and fixed. Uh, headliner was from Wolfsburg West and the ragtop materials and ragtop was also from Wolfsburg West. So yeah, that's the first mod that I did and I've had Goose for about two years. Great, thanks for that question, Rich. Question number three. Okay, question number three comes from K 
Kevin H or Hamlin in Australia. He's been uh, one of my really uh, on top of it and pretty engaged subscribers. Thanks Kevin so much, buddy. And I hope that everything's going okay out there with the, the fires. Uh, Kevin is from the Down Under or Australia. If you guys don't know what that is, <laughs> you should know what that is. Uh, his question is about Goose's rear end. He wants to know some details on the narrowed rear end. All right. Here's what I got to tell you about that. Uh, I really don't know a bunch of the details about it. All I do know is that it's been narrowed. I was told uh, four inches, but I don't think that's right. I don't think it's been narrowed four inches. I know it's been narrowed quite a bit, and I think it was done by using a later model, uh, like swing axle, swing axle components. I'm not sure exactly what was used. I need to get more details on that, more specifics, because it was already done when I got it, guys, uh, which is great. Saved me money, saved me time, saved me the effort of finding that stuff. And that's the kind of, it's, you know, we can find a project like this for what I found this one for, with the work done that had already been done. It's a great day. But Kevin, I wish I had more details. Other than that, we're gonna be talking about the transmission in question number four. So if you want to know some specifics about the transmission that Goose has, we're about to go there. But as for the narrowed portion of it, all I can, all I know for certain is that the axles are shorter axles. The actual measurements when it comes to the rear end, uh, maybe I'll go ahead and get that information for you guys in a later episode. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll get you at least some of the dimensions that have changed so that you guys can tell me, hey, Goose has the rear end out of a 66 or whatever, you know, well, not 66 because it's not IRS, but uh, still with swing axle, but Sorry, man, I don't have any specifics on how it was done exactly because I didn't do it, but I'll find out for you, all right? Thanks, Kevin. Great question, buddy. All right, guys, so the next question is actually number four. It's multi-parter, ABC. <laughs> and it comes from Rich in Detroit. Hey, Rich, is that you? Is that flat four, Rich? Probably the same guy, right? Yeah, well, it's multi-parter. First question is the transmission specs on what I have in Goose, this Rancho Pro Street transmission. Here's the gear ratios for you guys if you want to write them down or if you're curious about them. First gear, 380, second gear, 206, third gear, 1.30, and fourth gear, a 0.82. And it's a 412 ring and pinion gear in that thing. So also it's got a welded third and fourth gear uh, and the beefed up side cover. So yeah, it's a pretty strong transmission. I've been told it can handle up to 200 horsepower and we're probably gonna find out here eventually. So tire size, you asked just for the rear tire size, but I went ahead and gave you the front and rear tire size. I got 165-60R15 in the front, and I got 185-65R15 in the rear. So, well, the front tire probably isn't that anymore because of the rub and wear, but <laughs> we're getting new tires very soon. Okay, freeway cruising speeds and miles per hour. So let's go take a seat to talk about that for a second. All right, rolling in on my busted seat. Uh, all right. So when it comes to cruising speeds with Goose, uh, the first time I actually had a chance to have a decent drive was going up to a car show in uh, Conroe, which is it's a pretty good distance from where I live in Kima. So she cruised, I would say, sorry, baby. Didn't mean bumpy there. Uh, we cruised at about 65 miles per hour, and I'm guessing I was around 3,000 RPMs, and I say guessing because I was guessing. I don't have a RPM gauge on Goose yet. Soon I'm gonna be getting an ISP speedometer that has an actual tech built into it. That'll be super cool, but I don't have that yet. So to give you an actual idea of uh, what kind of RPMs I was at whenever I was cruising, it's all by ear, brother. And uh, <laughs> that's not a highly calibrated instrument. <laughs> But she handled well, there was no overheating, and it was kind of a cooler day though. It wasn't like a hot summer day. I would say it was probably about 60, 65 degrees outside. And uh, we cruised all the way up there for about 20 minutes at about 65 miles per hour. And then I bumped it up to about 75 miles per hour and she handled it, no problem. And there were moments where I went past that. Mm-hmm, yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not something that I plan on doing often, cruising at high speeds with uh, higher RPMs because, you know, we don't really want to do that with our air cooled unless we've got a, I don't know, built to handle that, right? Well, Goose's transmission can handle it, and the engine was unproven and untested to that point, but she is now. And honestly, I would say that after that cruise up there and coming back, 
The engine was truly broken in and it has been running so much better than initially when I, when I was first driving around town and stuff like that. I was doing little short jaunts and little short uh, circles that were maybe about 30 minutes or so, but that nice cruise up there has about a good hour and a half, probably about an hour and a half up there, an hour and a half back, really broke in my engine. So guys, if you got a brand new engine and you haven't done a really long drive on it yet because you were you know, kind of scared to do it, that's me. I was the same way. I was kind of scared to get out there and actually get on the road and put some miles, like, like some real miles at some real speeds on my engine. Don't be. You got to get out there, guys. You got to put some real mileage on there. You got to really break that engine in because as soon as I broke in this 2276, the General, man, starts up so much better, runs so much better, idles like a dream. Where's some wood? I need to knock on something. Hold on. <laughs> you know, superstitious. But yeah, uh, as for actual speeds at RPMs and kind of give you a gauge of that, buddy, I won't have that until I get a RPM gauge hooked up to this bad boy. But great question. All right, guys, that is really going to do it for today. Uh, just a short q and A. I I really want to go for a cruise before the sun goes down. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I hope you guys enjoyed this session. It's been, uh, yeah, I'm going to cruise with my bald tire. <laughs> hey, man. I got the number two a good tow truck. <laughs> if you got any questions or you guys got any comments or hey, you want to add to the next Q&A, hit me up down below in the comments and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, guys. This is Jason with JW Classic VW and thank you again. Thank you for joining this episode and thank you to all my new subscribers and to all my subscribers that have been here from the beginning. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you. We wouldn't have this channel without you and I will see you guys on the next one. All right, bye-bye.